that on August 10th, 2018, the notice of this meeting for Upper Township Committee was posted on the official Township Bulletin Board, mailed to the Cape May County Gazette, the Atlantic City Press, the Ocean City Sentinel Ledger, the Herald Times, and filed with the Township Clerk. Tonight's meeting is being video recorded up until the closed session portion of this meeting and will be available on Upper Township TV channel 97 and on the Upper Township website. I hereby direct that this announcement be made a part of the minutes of this meeting. Would all please rise, salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Coggins? Here. Mr. Corson? Present. Mr. Young? Here. Mr. Barr? Here. And Mayor Palumbo is absent this evening because he is away on vacation. Okay, can we have a motion uh, to approve the minutes, regular minutes, and the closed session minutes? So move. Um, was there two closed session minutes? No, no. not this time. Okay. okay. I don't think yeah. you had a conflict. Okay. No, Second. <laughs> Cole Rollbar. Mr. Collins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mr. Barr? Yes. Motion is carried for in favor. Okay. Report of the governing body. Scott? Good evening, uh, Deputy Mayor and Committee. Um, I just have one thing tonight. It's a uh, public service announcement uh, issued by the uh, State of New Jersey and uh, uh, State Office of Emergency Management, County Office of Emergency Management, uh, and the New Jersey Board of Public Utilities. Uh, they announced that as of August 18th, uh, the way people dial their phones in Cape May County will change. Uh, local phone calls in the past uh, could be made by dialing phone numbers within the 609 area code without dialing area code itself. A new overlay, as they're calling it, is coming uh, to the same region that contains the 609 area code to include 640 area code. Um, in connection with this overlay, all seven digit dial uh, calls in the area code 609 will be eliminated and the calls, uh, the callers will be required to dial one plus area code and the seven digit telephone number instead. They can't hear you out there, Scott. Uh, we'll have closer oh, to oh, sorry, sorry about that. So, uh, so essentially, the uh, the 609 uh, area code as we know it, um, it still exists, but there are some changes which uh, are resulting as a new overlay. Um, they're introducing a new area code, 640, um, but in the 609 area code, um, the callers will be required to dial one uh, plus the area code plus the seven-digit number uh, instead. Um, 911 and all your 211, 311, all the way up to 811 numbers are all going to stay the same. You still uh, utilize those uh, the same way in the, in the event of emergency or non-emergency information. Um, there is a website. Uh, it's www.nj.gov uh, forward slash BPU uh, that has information uh, relative to this. It goes into much more detail. And we put the same link up on our Upper Township website under latest news. That is all I have. Thank you. Nothing this evening, sir. Mr. Young? A handful of things for a closed session, but nothing at this time. Okay. Paul? Uh, thank you. Uh, we got notice that the DOT is uh, soliciting their uh, grant proposals uh, for the local aid projects. And again, um, I, I'd like to recommend that uh, we've gotten um, in the process of doing phase one on the uh, uh, rehabilitation of Commonwealth Avenue in Strathmere. I uh, can't quite do the whole street with the first phase of funds that we got, so I would recommend that we apply for the second half to complete Commonwealth Avenue uh, with the grant money. And that would be our proposal for this year. So that's going to be a discussion. What's required on our part to apply? Just filling out the... Just filling out the, uh, the application and submitting the online thing. And it, the online application, and then that online application comes back to uh, committee for a resolution uh, probably in you know late September, early October. So I just wanted to make sure before I went through the process that the committee was okay with submitting that project. Any motion on that, Dan, or just guidance? I just need some direction because it'll come back okay, here for a formal give, give him a motion, we can put it in the minutes, but you don't need anything, anything in writing. I don't need time. anything formal at this okay. point. That'll give him the minutes. All right. So motion. 
I'll make that in the form of a motion that we authorize Paul to apply for grant money. Second. Barr? Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Barr? Yes. The motion is carried. Uh, the only other thing I had was uh, this morning uh, we met with the um, Historical Preservation Society and the architect uh, that's going to be hired to do the renovations at the Old Township Hall, kind of our kickoff meeting to kind of give him some direction. And um, you know, we're probably going to try to meet monthly uh, as the project will continue to move forward. And uh, obviously I'll be keeping committee involved and uh, up to date on that project. Uh, other than that, that's all I had. Thank you. Or I just have one item this evening, a request for myself to attend a conference, the uh, Government Finance Officers Conference in Atlantic City at the end of September for three days, actually two and a half days. Um, early, early registration ends this Wednesday. It's $350 for the early registration. Otherwise, it goes up to $550. Um, our policy requires that I come to you for any requests like this, so I'm asking. Make a motion to approve. Second. Second, and you also get your credits, correct? Yes, I can get up to 24 credits. Good. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Barr? Yes. Motion is carried. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. John? Nothing to see. Who? Uh, nothing. Oh, well, except for, uh, we talked about for CVS. We had them clean up the site with trees planted. If you, if you look at it, I, I, over here, there, there are some, over here, over here, is dead already. and I've made a call to the, uh, the, the property owner who's, uh, you know, reaching out to the landscaper that did the work. Right, so give you a time frame on it. I, he hasn't, that? I haven't heard back from him, um, but I'll follow up. If you would, uh, please. We were, we're almost a year to last time, so. Yes. I just, that's supposed to be one of our best corners. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'll, I'll follow up with you this week. All right. Uh, other than that, um, just again, we're looking for volunteers for the car show. Remember, third. So, sure. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Mr. Corson? I have nothing at this time. Nothing. Okay. I just have one thing here. Uh, it was given to us by the uh, captain of the lifeguards. As we all know, the summer's coming to an end, so we have some of our lifeguards are college kids are going back to school. We made a request to uh, hire three part timers to fill in. Uh, make a motion that we hire Reagan Haley, Aiden Blake, and Jib Gibbons. And these are all pending their background check clearance. Motion to approve. Second. Bart? Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mr. Barr? Yes. Motion is carried. Okay. That being said, uh, unfortunately at this time, uh, Mr. Holly not here. We have a uh, young man who just attained his Eagle Scout, however they may be running late, so uh, when they get here we'll, we'll have the presentation. So that being said, how about if we go into the resolutions for them? Very good. Item number two, under resolutions, honoring Thomas Castaldi on attaining the designation of Eagle Scout. Move the resolution. Second. Call roll bar. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mr. Barr? Yes. Motion is carried. Three, appointing Adams, Raymond, and Hagen Associates as a licensed site remediation professional. Move the resolution. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Coggins? <coughs> yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Barr? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number four, cancel tax on exempt property for Block 574. Lot 17.02. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Barr? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number five, canceling and refunding taxes on exempt property for Block 571, Lot 6. Motion to approve. Second. Call roll. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Barr? Yes. Motion is carried. Number six, canceling tax on exempt property, block 723, lot 38. Motion to approve. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Barr? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number seven, authorizing the execution of a collective bargaining agreement between the Township of Upper and the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, New Jersey, for the term January 1st, 2018 to December 31st. 
2020. Motion to authorize. Second. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Barr? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number eight. Renewal of an alcoholic consumption license to Labari Land for the license year 2018. Move the resolution. Second. Call roll. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Barr? Yes. Motion is carried. Nine, certification of costs for abatement of nuisance on block 653.01, lot four, and block 330, lot 35. I have an amended resolution to that. It appears as though in that resolution we've left out the administrative charges that we have approved by ordinance prior. There was an additional um, I think it was cost a, that was added to that. I, I don't have I, a backup on that, so I couldn't yeah, tell I thought you the whether they had the administrative charge that we added was like $175, and the total of this in the resolution is $100, which I think is what we paid the landscaper. So it might just be a typo. I, I believe it is. I believe uh, the tax collector mm -hmm. actually sent another email on that, and I'm sorry if that wasn't included in your packet. Okay, so motion to approve, approve is approved with the with the administrative cost of whatever. I don't know if it was one twenty five or one seventy five. Okay. I thought it was one seventy five that we we're charged. Okay, very good. All right, we'll make a note. Second. Call the roll board. Mr. Coggins. Yes. Mr. Corson. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Mr. Barr. Yes. Motion is carried. Item number ten: certification of cost for abatement and nuisance for Block Five Ninety One. Lot 43. Move the resolution. So that may have the same issue. That may have, yeah. Same yeah. So that'll be with an administrative cost as well. Yes. As well. Call the roll bar. Okay. Mr. Coggins. Yes. Mr. Corson. Yes. Mr. Young. Yes. Mr. Barr. Yes. Motion is carried. Item number 11, governing body resolution adopting the third round 2018 housing element and fair share plan. Before you act on this, in fact, I suggest you table it until our planner um, uh, gets here, uh, I think she expects to be here at 8 o'clock, so I'd like to have her uh, at least give you a brief, few brief comments on uh, on the housing plan. It is consistent with the settlement agreement with uh, uh, fair share housing and our affordable housing litigation. It's also consistent with the master plan reexamination report, um, but I think it would be best if she was here in case you had any questions before you adopt the plan. Uh, she is expected to be here within the next 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Anybody have a problem? Nope. No, we'll table until then. Okay. Moving on to the ordinances. Item number 12. This is the public hearing. Public hearing and final adoption of ordinance number 7, 2018, an ordinance vacating a portion of Mistletoe Avenue within the township of Upper County of Cape May and the state of New Jersey. Did you have anything you wanted to add to the stand? No, this is a, a vacation request uh, by the adjacent property owner. It's fairly standard. Uh, it's been reviewed by Paul in my office. Uh, so you would want to open it up to a, a public hearing okay. if there's any comment. Anybody wish to make a comment? When it's 7, 2018. Okay. No comment. I have a motion to approve. I'll, let you, yeah. I'll make a motion. We adopt ordinance number seven of 2018. Second. <clears throat> Hold roll bar. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mr. Barr? Yes. Motion is carried. All in favor? Item number 13, public hearing. Public hearing and final adoption of ordinance number eight, 2018. An ordinance amending revised general ordinance chapter 10 and housing building and housing and chapter 11 property maintenance of the code of upper township and this is a public hearing again anybody wish to make any comments <laughs> ordinance 8 2018 yes sir if you would still step to the podium and Peter Schuller, Petersburg, New Jersey, been a township resident for about 50 years. The township ordinance 
I just want to make sure I'm right. Uh, 11.1.5 and I'm in the right ordinance, right? Turn it right again. Pete, turn it right towards you. Go ahead. That's better. I'll let Sheriff go over this evening. And um, it's the uh, one of the U.S. Supreme Court justices, Louis Brandeis. The makers of the Constitution conferred as against the government the right to be left alone as one of the most comprehensive rights and the rights most valued by civilized men. Now I'm saying that in respect to the right of privacy, not just be left alone in general. You know, starting when you're a little kid, and you get a toy, and you have a lot of brothers and sisters, like some of the people I know do. Um, and you have something that you got, a toy, whatever, and it's yours, a coloring book, whatever, and your brother or sister wants to take it, mess with it. They want to look at it, they want to pull it away from you, and pretty soon there's a fight. You know, you're arguing with them, you want it back. Your parents get involved, they got to settle a dispute. You know, they tell you to, they tell your sibling, give it back. It's yours, it's private, and it's an early on lesson, in my opinion, of uh, being respectful of everybody's pri of your own private property. So when you're done fighting, you go hide it in your dress drawer, your closet, somebody's private where they're not supposed to go. And you catch them looking at it again as a new argument starts. You tell them to quit being nibby, mind your own beeswax, get out of the room before you call mom. Not that you have anything specifically to hide, but simply because it's yours and it's not theirs, and it's one of the few things you own in life, and it's private for no other reason. As you grow up, you get a job, you acquire things, you become independent, your sense of ownership and privacy grows. At some point, for most of us, you make the biggest investor of your life is a piece of property and your own private house. Now you can enjoy the most privacy you ever have, private property, and private sanctity of your own home, and rightfully so. You're a grown up, you have the freedom to decorate your house, walk around, dress however you see fit, build a garage, fill it with tools, lock it up, Put up keep out, no trust testing, put up a fence that you want and private property signs. They're things that you go to the hardware store and you buy them for a reason, if you wish. Not that you're hiding anything or you're doing anything illegal, nor should you have to explain yourself as why. It's simply yours, you earned it, you respectfully earned that special place in the world, it's yours and you deserve that respect. That's how the majority of the people that I know feel. That's the way I grew up. It's so we're talking about the right to enter ordinance. The overwhelming concern of mine is that the township is going to adopt a law that code enforcement will have the right to enter a private property or premise as law if they believe there's an infraction or a code violation, they can go there. If they're allowed to use their own interpretation of this code and adopt policies and procedures or to clarify the application's provision. So what we're saying is they can interpret it within parameters of how they see fit, and they can use it as a reason for check to see if anybody's doing anything they think might be a violation. I know that Upper Township is a decent family-oriented, respected community, and I'm sure in single-digit percentages, somebody has something that's not meeting up the code that can be found in our residence, and from a government's perspective, it warrants the authority to check. But although the overwhelming majority of residents do not have code infractions, they're going to have to suffer the loss of that age-old privilege of privacy that we discussed that you started as a child. I think this is an inherent privilege and a right to have the sanctity of your own home not be violated from someone unless you specifically invite them or you're doing so, so ill they need a warrant. You know, police officers know that. They just can't search a warrant, do anything they want. They just can't walk in. There's a lot of rules about that, right, all through the government. The private citizen, what's happening is, if we don't have that law, the government's going to have, the burden of proof is going to be on the government to prove that they deserve to be there in the first place. We have a serious thing going on, and we deserve to be there, and they're going to have to prove it. When we allow an ordinance like that and pass a law like this, and it becomes law, 
the burden of proof is going to be switched to the homeowner. They're going to have to prove that the government or inspectors were not allowed to do what they did. That's a much harder road to hoe. It's an uphill battle. The average Joe doesn't have lawyers and money and they don't have the willpower to go and fight. So really it leaves the inspectors the right to do what they want and the people to try to protect themselves in some fashion for something they may simply have not done wrong. Again, they don't have anything to hide, but it's not the point. The point is you're not supposed to be there to start with. If I went to a lady and said, hey, can I look at your pocketbook? She'd be like, no, get lost. Well, I have a badge, I'm an inspe a pocketbook inspector. Take a hike. You, why, you got something to hide? I don't have anything to hide, it's just not yours, it's mine, it's private, you can't be there. That's the way I think we should look as, or the private citizens feel about government going into their private property, their private house, for a suspected code enforcement infraction. Right now, Pete, that, there is an ordinance already in place, and I think it's been there since 1986. Now, the township obviously is right in this, so they conduct as a township ordinance, even as a state ordinance, but we wouldn't be, you know, voting on this as an ordinance. It's already there. It, it's a state most ordinance, of, but not a township. Most of the ordinance. items that you pointed out are already in our code or are already in state As a law. state ordinance. No, they're in our code. Okay. What, what our code has was the national building standards, and uh, that's outdated. Um, but these provisions that you're concerned about with a, an officer, a code enforcement officer, coming and inspecting whether or not your property complies, that's already under both state law and our existing code. Well, I'm here to give my opinion on it. So that's and what our meeting's about. One thing you need to understand also, when it says right to entry, they don't, it doesn't give them the right to walk in and barge in. It gives them the right to ask for entry. If you deny it, it gives them the right to go to court and express their case to, to the judge and have a court order for entry. They can't just come in and flash a badge and walk into your property. I mean, you could deny it and then you have to get a lawyer and defend yourself, I understand. You can deny it, but they basically have the inherent right to do that unless you go to court to stop them. Well, that's your checks and which, which I feel is a huge intrusion. Well, privacy. same thing with the police. If the police yes. want to get a warrant for your house, if they, a warrant. Right. if they ask and you say no, they'll sit on your house and go get a warrant. You know, it, 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 just, you know, it's used that way, the way we use it, because many times because we can have a conversation with the owner, the problem goes away. So by law, we have to send a letter requesting, unless we have a complaint from that property, to, you know, request it. You know, a complaint is a complaint. You know, there's people that ride around attached with clipboards and just, you know, nag the zoning officers no, to do not, something. And sooner or later, like, think there's a problem, think there's a problem. There's a lot of open areas that don't specifically narrow down. I think a quarter should be in order first. I don't think they should knock on your door or put the people on the spot and then you have to defend yourself against an allegation that you just don't have to. It's your private property. I don't think that you should run like that. You know, when you look at some of the things that are out there, so there is some people that are going to have code infractions. I mean, there is. The question is, are the few people that have them warrant taking away the privacy of everybody else or imposing yourself on them to make them defend themselves when they should rightfully just live their peaceful life. You know, the late Justice Scalia, you know, there's nothing new in the realization that the Constitution sometimes insulates the criminality of a few, but in order to protect the privacy of all, it's necessary. That's the overwhelming majority of the township. I don't feel that an inspector should have, you should be granting the power to have a code enforcement person allowed to simply go up to somebody who may be intimidated and let him in. I just think it's the wrong way to go about it. I think there's a serious infraction. Now, an example is Mr. Young um, at one of our prior meetings. He stated uh, there was a case where an elderly residents were living in substandard conditions. She had holes in the roof, it was caving in, we talked about it, and she refused to leave at the risk of her own safety. Now, I agree in a case like that, it'd be irresponsible not to take action. The township actually, do you get a relocated? And again, if it was my Nana, I'd be happy that you saved her from a house falling in on her. So there's an extreme case. Now, maybe one in 5,000 in Upper Township, there's something like this can happen. The rest of the township loses the right of privacy to allow it to happen. I don't think it really warrants that. Again, there's probably other ways to go about doing it. I'm not a lawyer, you know, but something with guidelines and specific criteria, you know, maybe in an emergency, when a life-saving condition exists, Upon board agreement, the township will have the authority to enter a resident for the safety of the occupant. Something more narrowed down to a specific emergency, a specific reason, not just generally saying, I think there's a violation, I want to come in, no you can't, I'm going to go to court and I'm coming in. So I just want to express my opinion on that. I think we have a 
bedroom, decent, respectable community. I think, you know, privacy is one of the most important rights you have in your entire life, specifically in your own home. And I just think that it doesn't really fit the way I would see our township being governed. Um, you know, restraint of government's huge. Daniel Webster, liberty exists in proportion to wholesome restraint. You know, you have to give people the right to, to live their private life free of worrying about that somebody can knock on their door if they're right. Now, I'm not saying any of you guys are going to do that, but we don't know what's going to happen in the future. We don't know who our inspectors are going to be, and if somebody gets a bug, it's going to happen. You guys probably didn't write the ordinance anyhow. You can just decide to vote no if you want, but you didn't write it. But it just doesn't seem to fit the feeling that Upper Township has. You know, I don't think it's necessary to grant these powers to code enforcement. They're not police. You know, to carry us into the future. Um, another little quote from a Supreme Court Justice. The privacy and dignity of our citizens are being whittled away, sometimes by imperceptible steps. Taken individually, each step may seem to be of little consequence, like I'm discussing tonight. But viewed as a whole, there begins to emerge a society quite unlike any we've seen. A society in which the government can intrude into the secret regions of personal life. That's what I want us to be concerned with. Something that we need to look forward to. It may not be a big deal to some, but I think Upper Township government should do everything in its power to preserve the individual guaranteed freedoms of our residents against the intrusion of government, even on a small scale. <coughs> I think it's an important thing to be talked about, and I think it's just glossed over in a right to enter form. And I think maybe from a government's perspective, it's a necessary tool, but from our private citizens, it just seems to be intrusive, disrespectful, and an invasion of privacy. Thank you, John. To make sure that somebody doesn't infringe on anybody else's rights. That's why you have zoning laws, code enforcement laws. So why we have people to enforce it. It's not just color skeleton, but everybody does as they choose. So the laws and, and the way we do this, you know, speaking from experience of 13 years of being a zoning official, you know, when we go to school, we're taught how to do this. We don't just become a zoning official or code enforcement. The zoning inspector just doesn't become a zoning inspector. DCA regulates how he handles things. We're regulated a lot of state law, and that's what we're taught to governor's extensions and everywhere else we go. So, you know, again, it's, I, I agree on privacy. But what do you do when somebody infringes on somebody else's privacy or rights? It's a need. Well, zoning isn't the actual condition, you know, for a setback or whether a building's in a certain spot or whether you're in a right-of-way or things like that, that would be a zoning type issue like as you discussed with your experience. But I'm talking about the right to enter a residence or a building. That's not really a zoning issue. That's more of an inspection issue. And that's where the right of privacy, I think, is being stomped on here by allowing this uh, ordinance to, to happen. So it's like an indecent proposal. Somebody asks you a question they shouldn't even ask and you have to defend yourself in an awkward way. I think it's indecent to knock on somebody's door and say, I think you have a code violation in your house, and then you're embarrassed and you have to defend yourself in some fashion, and if you don't let them in, they're gonna go to court and come in. I don't think that's the flavor of how our township has been for all this time, nor should it be in the future. So I just think we should seriously consider whether this is an ordinance that matches our township, and whether in the zeal of accomplishing a specific enforcement item, we're going to stomp on individual rights of every person in the township that really has no knowledge, and most of the people don't even pay attention to this or even come here. So I just wanted to bring that up tonight. Yeah. But this ordinance been, has been on our books already for approximately 30 years. You know, it's a good thing some things come to light, you know, because sometimes the people don't even know that it's there. And it's a good thing some of this stuff gets brought up and wants to get adopted at the township because then you have an opportunity to review it, see if it really fits what we need. Like I said, from an enforcement perspective, if you were a policeman, there's still a lot of a lot of guidelines and criteria and specific things to be done before that should be allowed. I think an inspector should come back to the township and there should be a meeting of five wise men and have a determination of whether that's allowed. And there should be some specific guidelines narrowed down, not so the homeowner has to defend themselves. So the just so you know, for removal of a dangerous structure or a dangerous condition requires the township committee to vote on it. And, and we address that. There's individual cases like this one lady, you know, one in 5,000 people that that would be addressed to. And I can agree with that. In an emergency condition where life safety exists, 
not simply for code enforcement. And I think this kind of reads wide open, and I believe that talking to you, Mr. Young, there's a reason for being broad, so it's defendable. But in this case, with a law like this, the homeowner is defending himself. I think the township should be defending itself as to why they're allowed to be there in the first place, and I think it's not unfair to ask. Okay. Thank you. Do you, have, do you have any examples of when this has happened over the last 30 years? Well, you can see in a case where, you know, when you give somebody a machine gun, they're going to use it. When you grant power, I'm just, I believe that this power isn't something that code enforcement should just be allowed to have. I don't think we just hand out power. I think it should be the restrained. States, I think the freedom to be an individual and to just life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, the privacy, the is key. They do have that power, not the township. The state says they have that power. Well, we also have that ordinance now that allows us to do that. Exactly. So, so it's not like the just the state. Two mental land use laws. And a lot of we have to comply with. But again, I was just wondering, you know, the worry about do we have examples so that we can have examples of what has happened and when it's happened? Well, of course it's a worry. Anybody who would think about it would consider it as a concern. You know, the most limited government you could possibly have would be the best for all if it could work that way. So, you know, we make new laws every month. If we didn't have to make them, life would be great. I understand you have to make some. I'm thinking in this case, we should be very specific as to the allowance of a law like this. But these laws also are there to make sure that everybody has to write to light health and you know, clean living and, and fringe on an adjacent property. I mean, when you read it, if, if you're going to, I didn't come up to debate it in any fashion. I just came up to have an opinion, which uh, I'm, I'm thankful we're allowed to do. <laughs> but when you read it, it says, you know, if your downspout's down, or if your paint's peeling, or if you have a shingle where you could have some. So it's kind of ambiguous. I mean, it's kind of like open-ended. So you could use these as legal reasons allowed to be there. I, for one, think it's an invasion of privacy. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, John Grubb, Upper Township. Um, I just want to uh, touch on a few things that Pete brought up and uh, have a couple other questions. Um, so, regarding the right to entry, and was brought up that you know must police show up the house and need a warrant. Well, in order to get that warrant, I'm going to ask you, uh, Mr. Barr, don't you have to have t obtain uh, uh, probable cause in order to obtain that warrant in order to be able to write the entry in the house? That's correct. All right. So, in the township's opinion, what would the probable cause be for them to be able to enter someone's house? A simple phone call, someone anonymously reporting it. What would it be? Depends on what the situation is. Well, so is it an emergent situation, or is it just an investigation following up on a complaint? So, when do you determine, and how would you determine if it's an emergent situation, just based on an anonymous phone call or letter, for an example? It would be the totalitarian of the circumstances. That's what you would have to take in. And how would you how would you come across the, come up with that situate the situation of the God, totality? I mean, specifically, you know, it's it's. You're, 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 you're no, asking I'm not me a question. Specific. You got to give me a specific situation and how you would respond to it. But I mean, if you, yeah, you know, for instance, let's, let's let's boil it down. If it's an emergent situation and it's danger to, to the health and safety that's emergent, I think there's the exigent circumstances exactly. exception. If it's not an emergent situation and they don't grant you access, you got to get a court to say you get access. Okay, exactly. how would you know if it's an emergent situation? Well, obviously Anybody can call you. I'm sorry. Let me finish. Let me finish my thought real quick. Anybody can call you at this point and say, "Okay, um, right now I can call and say, you know what? I think Mr. Barr has an electrical issue. His lights are flashing on his front porch. I think you need to go inspect his house." The lights More flashing than likely, could possibly warrant an emergency on your doorstep. I'm sorry. More than likely, in a situation like well, that, a fire department. But, let's, but I, I don't mean, think uh, this I, is public giving, comment. Yeah. It's not public debate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so uh, I would. Suggest that we let Mr. Grubb make his comments, and then if you want to comment at the end, maybe that would be appropriate. Sure. My point is, is you have no set criteria of what 
process you're going to take other than just showing somebody show them up at your doorstep from a simple complaint which could be anonymous because at this point the township refuses to give up anybody's name or anything when there's any kind of complaint made which means it could fall under harassment if you have a neighbor that continuously complains about you and the township continuously just issues warrants shows up at your house it could be an issue of just a neighbor that's a pain in your rear and the person that's getting the complaint about has no recourse because you refuse to give them the name of who keeps making the complaint you as the township and i think that is an issue in itself and if the township wants to allow this as a simple phone call or a letter or anonymous letter or something of that nature the township needs to consider that they're going to make these people known of who the complainants are because I think it's going to resolve a lot of issues that the township wouldn't have to get involved in at all. Because once people realize that, oh, now you're going to be on the chopping block as well, and you have to prove to yourself that this was an actual issue, or you're going to see as, be seen as just a, a problem maker, you're going to lose a lot of people that are complaining. And, and I think that needs to be a, a consideration that needs to be taken into, you know, into an account in, in a lot of different scenarios, whether it be, you know, someone's safety, someone's you know, somebody's yard that looks like crap inside their fence that you can't see. It could be anything. But the, the currently the way things are made and the way that the township has structured this, that the, or, that the zoning officers have absolute power to make this decision and, and issue summonses and everything else, the people that are being the, once complained about, they have no recourse other than to defend themselves all the time. And it shouldn't be that way. But you shouldn't have to be on the defendant as a resident all the time. Let the person that wants to make the complaint, if they have a legitimate complaint, let them give you their name. Okay? If it becomes a harassment issue between that person, your neighbor, whoever it is, then the person that they're complaining about should have the right to address it and, and, and you know, take it to court with, on a personal level with those individuals. Not leave it up to the township, not leave it up to the individual that's getting complained about to keep having to go to court and defend themselves. That's my first issue. Next issue I have. It, well, actually, that's my main point that I want to make. But I had a, another question. I was just curious, and it could just be something off the wall or some random thing, but I'm just curious, how come the mayor is never here for the conversations regarding these ordinance, ordinances? Yeah, Every time this true. ordinance comes up, the mayor's not here an for any accident, reason. And it's the first time she's able to travel on her way on a vacation that was previously scheduled. So it, it was not scheduled, and he's not here uh, because of the ordinances. Well, I'm not, I'm not claiming that it was. I'm just curious because he wasn't here for the last discussion either that it was going to be public portion. So I, that's why I'm kind of curious as to why he hasn't been here. Unfortunately, there were two situations that he couldn't be here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> last time I was here, I asked the question, when do we take the absolute power out of the zoning ordinance, out of the zoning officer's hands? And you were going to get back to me. Do we have an answer for that? I did not speak to the zoning officer yet. I assume, I did talk to Paul about it, and my understanding is, and Paul, you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, that the, the zoning officer has had a number of complaints against you. I'm not talking about me individually. I'm not talking about well, my I don't know anything issues. else other than that. So no, that's I brought I up a, a broad question of, based on the ordinance, that states that the zoning officer has the right to decision how they're going to handle a situation. When do you take that power out of the zoning officer's hands and, and address it as a board or as a, another entity as far as, and I gave an example of my situation of where I, a, you're have allegedly- to question. I'm not sure I understand what you're asking. I thought I'm you were concerned about why you got multiple complaints. I'm getting yourself. to the point. I gave you an example as to why. You wanted to know what I was explaining myself last time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna reiterate it, okay? The zoning officer, alleged to have numerous complaints about my property. I asked numerous times to find out who it was that refused to give it to me. I went to court four times, and four times it was kicked out of court because you didn't have the right to sit there and tell me I had to remove things off my property. So at what point do you take that absolute power for the zoning officer to decide she's going to keep issuing summonses to somebody that's just going to keep getting... Well, the that's, that's, that's the, the definition of insanity. It's the definition of insanity. And my question is, when do you take that power away from the zoning ordinance? Someone has... She has to report to somebody and say, look, we've been to court she four times. Uh, let me finish. We've been to court four times, and the court started out four times. Uh, what do you want me to do? Or do you just let her continue to just keep issuing summonses to people? And we don't know how many other people in the township this has happened to, because most people don't want to be in the center of the limelight or be seen or even let other people know what their issues are. 
So when does that power get taken away from the zoning officer that she doesn't have complete power or he doesn't have complete power to make this decision? The zoning officer serves at the pleasure of the township committee. If there are pr improper actions by the zoning officer, there have been allegations by members of the public in, in the past and it's been investigated. You can go to the personnel officer, the personnel department, and file a complaint and, feel, and say that I don't think these, is, these citations are proper. So again, you put it on let, the let me. And can I finish? Yeah, All right. If it's investigated and found that she's acting improperly, there'll be discipline under our policies. If she's found that she's not, which is what's had happened before, because frankly, she's got a very difficult job. She has to tell people, no, you can't do this. You're not allowed to do this. And when people have repeated problems and repeated violations, they get very upset. So there have been instances where people say, look, I don't think that's proper that I'm getting these citations. And it's investigated, and she's never been disciplined at times that it's happened before. But that's the process. She serves at the pleasure of the township committee. The township committee cannot individually say, on this case, you have to rule this way. That's not proper. I'm not stating that. I I'm understand not even that. Yeah, right. but, but they do have the power to discipline and to hire and to fire the zoning officer. Again. And secondly, let me finish, please. Go ahead. If you're not happy with the decision of the zoning officer, like a violation or a determination that what you're doing is not permitted, you have the right to appeal that under state statute, under state land use law, to the Zoning Board of Adjustment. You can present your case to the Zoning Board of Adjustment, and the Zoning Board of Adjustment can decide whether you're right in what you think you're allowed to do and what the zoning officer says, no, you're not. So again, you put it on the defendant that's the way the system is no, set no, up. Let me finish now. Again, you put it on the resident that just simply had a complaint against them to defend themselves and have to go through all these steps to stop being harassed by, her, by a zoning officer. Can I answer that? Go right ahead. It's not these people, me or the zoning office that does that. That is your state statute that does that. That's the process. That's the uh, uh, due process, if you want to call it that, for someone who is alleged to have violated an ordinance. She bring, does the zoning officer bring any of these complaints to this township committee? No. Never. Never. It's not proper Never brings for her to do that. Right. It's not. It's she not has proper. a supervisor. The zoning officer has a supervisor. She has a supervisor. Which would be who? Well, personnel department. Okay, so have you ever been brought anything from the zoning office that says, listen, I've got the same complaint from somebody four different times. No, 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 no,
what test was she given to qualify her to make the utmost decisions you know what? on everything? This is not, not germane to the... Uh, Any yes. of this this do We're, this You're word. going back into talking about personnel, and this is not the place to talk about personnel. I have no question. Thank you. Thank you. Scott Phelps, Upper Township. Uh, as far as the ordinance, maybe if it was reworded the way Hobie explained it, because the literal sense of that ordinance states that they can just walk in at any time. It doesn't explain that if you deny them, then they have to get a court order and this and that. It might be a little more palatable if it is broken down the way you explained it. Okay. Two. You did say personnel was her supervisor. He said, uh, I'm her supervisor. You, and if I you said, that, can I finish? If I said it as though they actually supervised her work, that was incorrect. Under state statute, she determines violations of the ordinance and non violations of the ordinance and prosecutes them to the municipal court and citations. If you have a problem with her activities, not her decision making, but her activities, if it goes beyond the scope of what she's supposed to do under state statute, you could, you, your, uh, her um, review is to her uh, personnel. That is the nuance. Okay. Well, the way you you and actually did say, if I, if I you actually it did sound say, like there was a direct supervisor of the decisions he's making. He he that, asked who's her supervisor, and you said again, personnel. Again, if that's the okay. question I gave, I didn't mean to. As far as his comment about people running around with clipboards writing stuff down. I have a neighbor that does that. You know her very well. And there was, he's moved away, but there was Art Turner a few years back that was writing stuff up about everybody. So there are people that are just making complaints willy-nilly. And then Shelly has to you know, follow up on it. But there are people that are doing that and harassing other people just and that's for the sake of harassment. That's in every community. Okay, I'm just uh, And it's it a, a shame, it is. But it's, uh, there's a couple. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, with no further comments from the public, do I hear a motion for the adoption? So moved. Well, well, we have some discussion. Oh, yeah, go. Dan, that, that one part with the entry, is there any way that can be rewarded or softened? I, frankly, it, it parrots the state statute. It's similar to the state statute, and it gives the power. So that would be what the judge would rule on as to whether they have, under local ordinance, the authority to go in. So that there are state uh, court cases that essentially say you can't breach the peace. If you're denied access, you have to get, unless it's an emergent situation. So I wouldn't recommend that you change it. So basically it mirrors. And it's the same privileges that have been in there, as you Mr. said, Brown, for many years. Can you take a seat, please? I just have one more question, if that's OK. Yeah. The public portion is closed. The public portion was closed. So it basically mirrors the state statute. It, it mirrors the rights that are given to the code enforcement officer under the uh, state regulations and statute. Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you for clarifying. Do right. well, I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Hold the roll, please. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Deputy Mayor Barr? Yes. The motion is carried. Item number 15, introduction and first reading of ordinance number 10, 2018, a salary ordinance, amending ordinance number 17, 2007. Skip those 13. Uh, 14, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm moving right along here. Okay. All right. Public hearing and final adoption of ordinance number 9, 2018, an ordinance to amend chapter 13 of the Code of Upper Township to permit wireless communication facilities in the public rights of way. Anything you want to add for this, Dan? Uh, no, this is uh, what we've been working on for a number of months. It's got to do with the uh, regulations and uh, the requirements to. Uh, upgrade uh, communication, cell communications facilities, and it requires a uh, an agreement with the township, and they must comply with uh, aesthetic uh, considerations as well as uh, height and size limitations. Actually, I think this is one of these I noticed already put up on Route 50. Right by. I don't believe we've had anybody come in and do it in the township yet. You've seen it in some municipalities 
these are actually less obtrusive under these regulations um, than some of the other ones and some of the other I other actually noticed it today. today. I don't it, think it says it. I don't know what that is. I, I, it's right near Peach Orchard Road. Yes. It's not the same thing. I don't know what that is. I've been trying to figure out. Because if they look like that, that's actually unsightly. Yeah, that's not same thing. Okay, can you look this, into this? We haven't, formally, <laughs> we haven't formally re received a request, nor do we know of anybody who's installed one. Correct? Correct. But there is something I've seen that about the size of that TV on a pole, but deeper. <laughs> Any other comments? Anybody from the public? Wish to comment on the ordinance? Close the public comment. I'll make a motion we introduce motion. Or, or, ordinance number nine of 2018. Second. Murder roll bar. Adopt. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Deputy Mayor Barr? Yes. Ms. <clears throat> Carey. Okay, now item number 15. Introduction and first reading of ordinance number 10, 2018, and ordinance amending ordinance number 17, 2017, known as the salary ordinance. For the calendar year 2018 and if you choose to move on with this you could have the public hearing on august uh or it's september 10th make a motion to introduce Four. mr coggins yes mr corson yes mr young yes mr barr yes motion is carried uh, do you I, want to go any further with 16 until well it's your call we can go through the rest of the agenda and the public portion and then re re revisit it um paul and i can explain she's, she's about 15 minutes out well why so don't we go through the rest of the agenda the rest of the yeah. business then. okay all right under new business item number 17 country sure women's club request use of the upper township community center and also requesting to hold a bingo number 502 and a raffle number 501 on October 20th, 2018. Motion to approve. Second. Call roll. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mr. Barr? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number 18, the Upper Township Rescue Squad requests to hold a trunk or treat on Tuesday, October 23rd, 2018 with a rain date of October 24th at Amanda's Field. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Barr? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number 19, all in sports request use of Amanda's Field, Betts Field, for a season of men's flag football beginning on August 19, 2018, and ending on December 23rd, 2018. I'd like to recommend we table this until such time that we get updated insurance. The insurance the, certificate we received the, expires the, on the 16th of August. The, and also the form is not filled out properly as an individual's name is not listed in the first line of the form. The insurance certificate, they did uh, mention that they would be forwarding a new certificate um, when it got closer to the date. Yeah. Is, is this going to have over 100? Does it have to let have me, a written me, resolution, Barbara? Let me look at uh, it. Yes, I believe so. So it's got to come back for written resolution anyway? I believe so. Um, I, I mentioned now. to Mr. Coggins before the meeting that I had mentioned to uh, the clerk's office, Barbara, you were off last week when I asked that, that comment about the, the form and the individual uh, uh, as well, I had mentioned that that should be updated. I don't know oh, whether wasn't, Larry has that, taken any steps on that. That message um, did not get to me. Sorry. And it may also be uh, a an issue with estimating the uh, the repair costs, if any, that may be necessary on it. The, uh, the repair cost was estimated for the uh, men's softball field, correct? Uh, I guess if we're going to move them to the best field, we, we don't overseas. We, we don't know that at this point because it only came in in an email this afternoon. But what I'm suggesting is they be, those issues be addressed because it's got to come back for a, a written resolution anyway. Correct, Barbara? Yes. Uh, uh, I know with the 100, been, over 100, but uh, it's not 100 people there at one time. That's why I, I guess some kind of 
Well, they, they placed 120 on their right, application. But it's, it's so. over like a five or six hour period. Well, they stated 120. So according to our regulations and our statute, it has to be approved by the Township Committee formally, which means that we need to address some of these other conditions and make sure the paperwork is correct. Regulation. It was going to come back for a resolution anyway, Hope. It was going to come back for a written resolution anyway. Uh, yeah, I guess my thing is just they're looking at starting August 19th. I do notice that, yeah. I don't know if that's set in stone or no, not. That's, that would have to change. approval contingent upon them submitting the proper form to the board. That's up to the committee's pleasure, but... I mean, the insurance, you never get... Very rarely yeah, you get that you know, I, before it expires. I, I trust the first explanation that they were told that it, it was expiring and, and their insurance agent said I have to issue it at the time of expiration. So what would you feel? That, that's correct. Um, so you're, you're comfortable with that? Yes, I am comfortable with that. Uh, we, we can certainly uh, move forward. You know, we can ask them if they can. I don't know if their games are set in stone, if there's something that they do with a, you know, with another organization um, with it you know because the next resolution would be I don't after know that we've set the administrative fees and, and the other costs um, if there yes they, damages, I don't know that we've done that so we have done that but extent, we have not asked not to the fullest extent though. we have not required an escrow now and again a question in my left vote on this or? so if you would like to table this and bring it back with the resolution it's the with all the conditions the uh, or if, that you know, if, if, if it's a time is of the essence thing shall we make a a conditional approval conditional approval until the next meeting and then they have to resolve these issues yeah they're gonna have right. to take and these issues gonna... should be resolved before they use the field yeah in other words, the clerk's the office is satisfied so resolving the following issues which would be the proper insurance certificate proper filling out of the forms uh, addressing the escrow costs for any damages to the field and you said there were some other costs that were yeah. 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 right under the ordinance to charge uh, any costs associated with the use of the field in a, over and above the regular rental and if it's my understanding I don't profess to understand exactly what they're doing but it's repetitive use significant repetitive use of this field which may cause wear and tear on the field so I think what the suggestion was, rather than charge them an amount up front, would be to say, look, this is what we think might happen, and this is an escrow to be used for that. And that would be explained in a resolution that they would have to post that. And again, I'll ask, am I allowed to vote on this, or is this still a conflict for me? Or no. Am I allowed to vote I mean, if it was withdrawn, no. That's what I understand. So that's okay. okay, so I, I is that a motion? Yes. Do we have a second? Sorry. Cole Robar. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Barr? Yes. The motion is carried. Payment motion to bills. bills. I hereby move that all claims submitted for payment at this meeting be approved and then incorporated in full minutes of the meeting. Second. Cole roll. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Barr? Yes. The motion is carried. And on our uh, township website, we have a report of municipal departments, animal control, construction, clerk's office, division of EMS, finance office, municipal court, tax office, tax collector, certification of mailings for 2018 final, and 2019 preliminary tax bills and advice copies. And the upper township green team minutes. Motion to approve is. Motion to accept the reports. Second. Bar? Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mr. Barr? Yes. The motion is carried. Okay, and at this time, we'll open it up to. Why don't we. Uh, I, I, I know we're not open public, but we still have two things on the agenda. We're, we have tables. We can go back to it. She's there. She's she's gonna, be, the she's public gonna. might have comments again after that, though. No. That's true, but one of one of them's only an introduction. Okay, but that we can open it up to the public again if you want. Okay, she comes. All right, we'll continue with the public comment. At this time, it's open to public comment. Anybody wish to approach? Yes, ma'am. 
Yes, ma'am. My name is Elaine Holsenbach, and um, I live at uh, 20 Black Oak Drive in Palermo. Um, well over a year ago, and again a month ago, I explained the need for beach path mats for the dunes in Strathmere and Whale Beach. I was told here that the township had, as you stated, accommodated the people in need. After checking, I found you had not, according to the ADA regulations. Over the last two weeks, I collected signatures on Sumner Road and a few at two local restaurants. 90%, however, were strictly on Sumner. Every person, day tripper, weekly renter, and homeowner, was enthusiastic to sign the petition. I have 550 signatures to date. I have a copy of the petition here for you. I have also sent a copy to the Office of the Governor of the State of New Jersey, as well as the Attorney General's Office and the New Jersey Division of the ADA. These mats are not a luxury, they are a necessity. If a person had been collecting signatures for this petition on every dune entrance in Strathmere and Whale Beach, that would amount to approximately 17,000 signatures. We have a very large population of visitors to our beaches, many of whom struggle with baby strollers, young children, beach carts, and physical infirmities to negotiate the dunes. Since the dunes are not created by nature, all the more reason why the township needs to assist all visitors by adding beach mats over all soft sand so that all people may more easily visit our beaches. Thank you. And here's a copy Thank you. of the you petition. Can, you can give that to our clerk. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? That mat is available. A specific mat for that. I have it written down at home, but I saw it. Um, listed as an only municipality had a beach mat that they rolled out and it was a specific pieces and our wheelchair was rolled out from the access out to the beach to a specific length so it looks like it is available out there there is a product that they do make we that have, works we have, we have, have, we have, you have that yes and actually i noticed ocean city i walked from 9th street i think to 14th street and i think i saw all in one mat right the whole way but so so i didn't know if you guys actually had something that was out there but they do actually make one yes yeah, so we have one down at beasley's point where they bring uh this is holds back i'm sure they're not available to be put everywhere but i'm sure we could detach it should be able to find some limited spots as to where they could put these that someone in need of that could go to that specific well, beach for that just like to say that I know you approved that ordinance um, a state statute although maybe for legal reasons is something we would want to think we'd want to abide by because it's been tested in court but we're not Newark we're not Camden we're not Jersey City we're Upper Township but we're not even Ocean City you can have an Ocean City person where you have bed and breakfasts and hotels and motels and rooming houses where people's houses are just wide open to the public so the privacy issue there is certainly not as much the case. I'm not specifically talking about Shelly going into somebody's property. I'm not dumping on anybody or picking on her. I was just talking about the individual right to privacy. I think our township privacy is not necessarily this state's opinion of what a privacy should be. So the question is, just because a state has an ordinance, 
that is a state statute, does Upper Township have to adopt that? Are we required to follow a state ordinance or can we have one of our own that's tailored fit to our community? I, that's a question for The Dan. answer to that is no, you don't have to adopt any ordinance, but if you want to protect the health and safety of the community, and frankly, I don't know if you're aware of this, but before this ordinance is adopted under state law, they have to make a determination there are properties that need to be addressed. And they did do that a month and a half ago, or is that when that resolution was adopted? And we do have properties that are a danger. Um, I understand there's single digit occurrences, I, and we use one, you mentioned one of those examples. I just, it makes it sound like because it's a state ordinance, and it's enforceable, we should adopt it, which I disagree. I think if the township has the right to have our own ordinances that fit our community, we shouldn't be afraid to follow that. You know, here I'm talking about a bedroom, private, family community. We all grew up here, we know. And then we're gonna take, you know, a sledgehammer to everybody's individual rights to address some individual cases. Well, you can tailor make an argument for an individual case. You can have single digit houses, where people have emergency situations, or you know some of the ones you address, like on Rivendale, and I think you can address them with our current, current laws, or have some stringent, specific criteria and guidelines to address something like that so it can't be abused. Now we talked about in previous meetings, not this inspector, maybe the next inspector. I think we, we just, you know, we just open the door to say the government's the power and the people aren't. And I'm not criticizing or disrespecting the government in any way, or your authority, but in turn, when the government lets a rule like that go, they're disrespecting the entire community for the idea that we have to save a few people and everybody else, we can do whatever we want. So I don't believe that just that we said that because the state adopts it, Upper Township should necessarily adopt it, even if the state's had it forever. There's places in the state that we don't want to be and we don't match and our law should match the township we're in. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, else? Just to be clear, since this has been adopted, uh, does this mean that the township isn't going to consider putting people's names out there that are the complainants or the people that are complained about have the right to defend themselves? Because you adopted it, this, there is, you have it worded. It, if I may answer it, there's a criteria that has to be reviewed when someone requests the name of a complainant. If it rises to the level of a complaining witness, you, you're absolutely right. You have the right to address that person in court and ask them questions. If, if there is a concern that there is retaliation, wrongful retaliation potential against the witness, there are instances where government entities will uh, protect the name, for example, in uh, physical assaults and things like that. They protect witnesses because they're concerned of tampering and, and bad things happening to the witnesses or the complainants. Um, so that would have to be reviewed on any OPA request for a name of a complainant. Um, I don't know in your instance whether or not names were available, whether they're anonymous complaints or what, but the bottom line is that's the analysis that has to go down when someone requests an OPA request, the copy of the complaint. Is this a documented criteria? And where could I get it's it? It's case law. You'd have to time. You can talk, contact the Government Records Council. They have a public advocate that you can talk to them about. They could probably talk to you up on it. Um, it's cases. Judge made law. But the township doesn't have criteria. They follow this based off of that. No. There will be a determination made when an open request comes in. If there's no documents, if there's no written complaint, there's nothing for us to disclose. So again, the zoning officer makes a determination based on the complaint. But you can't, what, what Dan's saying is you can't just call the zone officer. You have to put in a written OPA request for the information. Well, then it's reviewed by the zoning officer. If she has a question, it's reviewed by legal counsel, and it's either granted or denied. No, I'm talking about the complaint. If it's a written complaint, you can request a copy of it. If it's not a written complaint, there's, and, and they don't know who it is, I'm sorry, go ahead. they're not required to give you a name. You accept anonymous phone calls for complaints right now. I don't know. You'd have to ask the zoning officer. But it's I, I on record in court hearings that I've been to personally. All right, it's on record. They accept anonymous phone calls. 
for complaints. It happens. It's been stated by people in the audience at several meetings. It happens every day. Every Again, day. Are, are the township willing to open that up so the people have the right to defend themselves against those people, or are you just going to keep accepting anonymous complaints and following through and wasting taxpayer dollars on things that could be it just frivolous complaints? Anonymous complaints happen everywhere. I'll give you an example. My campground, I threw somebody out for lack of payment. They called the county health department, made an anonymous complaint against me. Boom, I, I was subject to a whole new inspection. I found out because they were bragging on Facebook. That being said, anonymous complaints happen all the time. Was it a pain for you to deal with? A complete campground inspection, yes. Okay, and now this is something you're asking residents to do when people have complaints against their properties well, and their personal, I'm sorry, I'm talking, against their personal property and against things because you accept a, an anonymous complaint. But as you're a, re a, a resident, you also have the right to make anonymous complaints. Okay, but my point of it is, if it's a legitimate complaint, you shouldn't be putting somebody that's, if it is a frivolous complaint, which we know the township has gotten several of, Okay, Great. then you shouldn't put those residents on the defensive that really have nothing that, that there's no issue against. And this is what you're, you're opening Pandora's box, basically. Because at this point, the way you're adopting this ordinance, anybody can call the township about any single thing they want. Example I just gave was if I see lights flickering at Mr. Barr's house, I can call and say I want his house inspected for electrical work because I think it's unsafe. Whether we adopted this ordinance or not, you still could have made the same complaint and the same had the same Again, result. but now it's made public because now you're bringing it to the light. The township has now well aware of it. It's in the papers. It's everywhere now. And now residents are aware and people in the area are aware that this ordinance is here now. And they're aware that you can make anonymous phone calls and anonymous complaints about anybody you want, and there's and, and there's no repercussions to people for doing that. And that's not right, it's not fair that people in the community that aren't doing things wrong and just may have a pesky neighbor or somebody that may be an issue, you may have an issue with working for the township or whatever. It's not fair to the, to the people of the community of the township that I'm, you leave it that way. I'm not disagreeing with you, but I'm telling you that's the way the system's been in every state agency, every government agency accepts anonymous complaints. And again, based on the conversation that Pete just brought up, the township does not have to adopt the state the state laws. You can word the laws and work the laws the way that your local community, it works for them. You don't have to abide by the state regulations and the state laws in entirety. You can adopt and change them the way it suits the township itself. Well, and, you, well, you're and, not, and, you're, and you're not allowing yourselves to even consider that based on anything that the residents of the township right. have brought in the issues that they bring to you. Whether or not the township accepts anonymous complaints, I don't think that ordinance goes over how people can complain. It's that I'm talking about in general, overall. The state now, in general, that, that he just said that we do not have to take, you do not have to adopt state law. You don't have to adopt it the way it is. And if, you're, if you do not require to do that, then you should be able to may adjust I, the rules. May I interject? And, and it's, it's, it's not adopting state law. It's not adopting state law. The, the net effect of, of this ordinance and not having it and not having it is that we can enforce it at a local level as opposed to using the state regulations and the state uh, statutes, which would require more court activity by the township and more expense to the taxpayer. That is it, it broadly the, the, the reason for why we are incorporating these standards in our local ordinances so that we can enforce it through municipal court and through uh, uh, abatement of violations. Point. That, that all the rights to demolish unsafe structures, to, to condemn unsafe structures, to do all those things, they're all allowed under state law now. The difference is to take action on those under the state regulations requires special counsel to take special legal action and that's expensive for the township. This type of law allows us to do essentially the same thing at less expense at a local level. And, and putting its cost at all the taxpayers. Either way you look at it, the cost is coming on the taxpayers. Much whether less the cost. Taxpayer has a this law, I'm much sorry, less cost. I'm sorry, whether the taxpayer is sure. taking it out of his pocket personally for an issue, a complaint against that personally, or the township having to go to court. Because the taxpayers are still paying the township to go to court. No matter how you look at it, the taxpayers are eating the cost of it. But there should be a way to change the ordinances and change the way things are worded so it eliminates the idea of having to go to court, period. If there's not a substantial uh, uh, specific criteria, excuse me, or some sort of burden of proof that there is an issue at some property that these things have to be addressed, 
then we should not, as taxpayers and residents, have to follow through and spend our money or taxpayer money to fight the township to go to court. You're paying twice. You're paying yourself, you're paying your attorney to go to court, and you're paying the tax at the township because the township is taking you to court. You're paying twice. And it's not right. And you're not recognizing this. That's all I have. Thank you. At this time, we're going to suspend the uh, public comment. And we had the table. We have the why, don't, why don't we have a, 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 Eleven a, and a motion to close the public comment, and then we'll open it up again after we do the resolution. Motion to close public comment. So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Barr? Yes. Motion is carried. We're going to go back to what? item number 11. Item number 11, governing body resolution adopting the third round 2018 housing element and fair share plan. And before you act on this, we do have uh, at this point uh, our planner uh, Tiffany Morrissey here and I'd like her if she could to come up and, and give a brief explanation of what the planning board has done in terms of the master plan re-examination and uh, the production of the housing element and fair share plan. So at the, uh, uh, Tiffany, can, you could, pick it can up? I ask you to go to the podium? Oh, yeah. So yeah, so we can pick you up. No problem. Thank you. Sorry about something like that. I have a lot of affordable housing meetings all over the place this month so thanks for accommodating. Um, uh, past week, the planning board adopted the 2018 master plan revisions, housing element, fair share plan, spending plan, and a re-examination report, as well as recommended implementing ordinances to the governing body for introduction to implement the affordable housing plan. The affordable housing plan is based upon a settlement agreement with fair share housing agreement, or fair share housing group. Uh, that is endorsed by the local courts and provides for the township's affordable housing obligation. Um, the affordable housing obligation is based on a settlement um, and is about a 43% reduction from the original number which you were originally required to provide. So you are given a rehabilitation share, prior round number, and a third round number, and that third round number is 43% less than what we started with. Um, the ordinances within the housing element that you're asked to, and the housing element are presented to you um, as a governing body to endorse um, the housing element and to then move forward on the proposed ordinances. The housing element includes various provisions on how to address, address your affordable housing, including a durational adjustment, which allows you to push the affordable housing obligation forward until such time that public sewer is made available in certain areas of the municipality. So it's not an it's not a, a obligation that occurs instantaneously. It happens if and when sewer becomes available. I can be a lot longer about this if you have questions, but that's the overview. And Mr. Young, if you want me to elaborate on anything, well, I, if they have questions, I think uh, we can do that. Um, just to, to highlight it, 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 the settlement that we went over in detail before we uh, adopted our resolution approving the settlement that was court approved is the, the implementing planning aspects and the ordinance that's going to be introduced tonight carry out the terms of that settlement. Yes. Essentially what's happening is those extra units, which we reduced by 43% of the, the number of affordable housing that the township is required to have, they are going to be produced through a mixed use plan uh, in the event we ever get sewers in Memora, uh, where there have to be a mixed use of commercial and residential. Uh, the commercial would have to be built first and uh, uh, the, the theory there is that if residential gets built there'll be a cushion to pay for it with the commercial and also it fits in with our planning that has been in place for over 10 years uh, with respect to the Memorial Town Center which is it's to be a mixed-use area that is a walkable downtown so it becomes a downtown center um, uh, obviously we haven't had the economic engines to produce any of that in the last 10 years. Uh, the only other aspect that changed is the fact that there was a density transfer uh, right where independent apartment buildings could be built uh, by taking residential density in our more rural areas and transferring it. That had been part of the plan under the, the uh, Department of Community Affairs grant that we had back in 2008. 
Um, that's no longer there, the density transfer, um, so that any development that occurs in the new Moore Town Center will uh, be, have to be a mixed use, so the commercial hopefully will pay for a substantial portion of any tax hit you would get on the residential. One question, I might understand that if there is a, a buildable lot within the Moore, Moore, Moore Town Center, that if the owner of that property chose to build a conventional residential unit, they could continue to do it. That would not have to be earmarked as affordable housing. Uh, you have to be, right now, and I don't. You can tell me whether or not these specific terms are in the housing element. But in the ordinance that's implementing the housing element, they would have to plan for a mixed use. You cannot build straight residential in the Memorial Town Center. Under so the current proposal. what I think the question is, is this is an overlay zone in the town center and only becomes effective when sewer or public um, infrastructure is made available, a wastewater package treatment plant. So if someone came in tomorrow and wanted to build a single home, they could do that if the current zoning right now allows for it. The overlay goes into effect when the but, but sewer becomes available. The, the zoning map yes. is changing to the Memorial Town District under the ordinance that's being introduced, and that Memorial Town District is a new district, not an overlay. That is true. It is a new district, but it, it's and, um, and and it does not permit standalone residential because of the mixed use requirements. And, and that zone right. that zone never allowed for standalone, standalone residential. residential. That was always a commercial district. Yes. I apologize. I just spent an hour and a half on an overlay zone. My, 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 my I, I apologize. I, I get feather my cap. I usually don't ever get to correct Tiffany. <laughs> it's good. I could have used you for the last hour and a half, Dan. <laughs> So if you don't have any other questions, we can act on the resolution and then we would have to go to the introduction. Okay. So uh, we have a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Barb? Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Deputy Mayor Barr? Yes. Motion is carried. And we'll move, move on down to ordinance uh, item number 16. Introduction and first reading of ordinance number 11, 2018, an ordinance amending revised general ordinance, chapter 20, zoning of the Code of Upper Township. And again, uh, I, I just explained what this does. It implements the requirements of the settlement. It also implements the suggestions of the master plan reexamination and the housing element uh, that was just approved by the planning board and the township committee this is an introduction it would be, it would be the 27th i believe that under our court schedule that we'd have to adopt it by yes. so it'll be published rather shortly so we have a motion 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 to accept second introduce to introduce to the public hearing august 27th yeah. second 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 Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Deputy <clears throat> Mayor Barr? Yes. And what was the date for again? August 27th. Public hearing. Now I would suggest that um, because we did a little bit of juggling of, this, of the agenda that you reconvene and reopen the, the public so if there's anybody else that wanted to uh, address the public and thank you Tiffany. Tiffany, thank you very much. Well, you might want to say if there's any questions on anything. And Dan, I want to go on record too. And I thank Tiff at the last planning board meeting. It's been a pleasure to work with her. And her understanding and knowledge on this has really got this township out of a maybe a quandary down the road. And it, uh, it's it, been you know, the one thing I didn't mention that is is key to this, and Tiffany was a big part of it, is that this plan that we're agreeing to that it was part of the settlement it is essentially the same planning we've had. It just makes it more of a mixed use and takes away the standalone residential developments that were proposed. And the number is significantly lower than the fair share housing folks originally claimed. So it, it, it's a reasonable plan for the township and it fits in generally with what they had as a plan for more uh, from, from, for the last 10 years. Yeah, so. Again, thanks. Thanks. Thank she made it very understandable what the planning would be. So. I had a lot more to say, but you know, <laughs> I, I can do that here. But I think you guys are good. 
<laughs> I'm sure we'll hear it. Okay, at this time we'll open it back up to public comment. Anyone? from Steelman Town representing um, the Upper Township Business Association. My question is that last zoning ordinance um, that you just passed. So Tiffany, hi, maybe you can answer this. Um, so at the planning meeting last week, we talked about the fact that, um, that the mixed use was mandatory in the Marmora Town Center. So I just want to be clear, if that sewer never happens, is it still a mandatory mixed use? Yes. Okay, so. It would be able to be built at the density without, it would have to be at a different density. And, and so you know it's phased in in the ordinance. It's not adopted yet, that's what the 27th will mm -hmm. be. It's phased in in the ordinance to the effect that you have to plan for residential, but you don't have to build the residential. Do you follow what I'm saying? In other words, you have to provide the space, and it has to be part of your phasing to have the residential, but you can build the commercial first and then. Residential is in your plan. In other words, for for affordable housing and to have a reasonable opportunity for affordable housing, you have to be able to allow the opportunity to, to build it. But our but but as we saw with even the Marmora Shoprite Center Plaza, that required a package treatment plant to build a complex even of that size. So to, to get any commercial development of any significant gradable base. We're going to have to work in trying to get sewers or package treatment plants to be able to accommodate commercial growth to help grow okay. the rate of base with the township. But if I wanted to put like um, like an ice cream stand in one of the vacant buildings, like where the old Lavaris was, where I have to not new construction. Because you're in an existing building, you're not building really new construction. Okay, so that would be a regular change if it's not real. It's only new construction that this applies to. New construction. Yet, maybe I can give it to you in, in a better explanation. Um, the uh, affordable housing uh, advocates, they want to make sure that your plan allows for people to build housing at a 20% uh, set aside for affordable. So 80% market rate, 20%. If you had a design of your area that said no, just build commercial, you can't build a residential, that it's not a mixed use allowed, they can say that's that's exclusionary zoning. You're not allowing the opportunity for somebody to come in to build the, uh, the affordable housing. And that's the, the tipping point is the 80-20, that if you require 20, the, the 80, you can get your value out of the 80. Okay. Did I say that correctly? Yes, yes right. you did. I guess my concern with thinking about it from that last meeting was, are we putting um, an undue burden on development, uh, commercial development, by tacking that on, that affordable housing piece? That was just my concern. Uh, the town has an undue burden to make up the residential affordable housing. And this was a plan that would have fit with the town center anyway, because it was a mixed use center. So okay. it's not changing the plan of the town at all. Um, because you need residential to support a downtown. And the affordable housing component, like I said, is only 20% of the total residential. So the idea is that we split between the commercial and the residential, non-affordable, help support each other in terms of making it a profitable development and subsidize this 20% affordable unit. And tying it to the fact that the commercial actually gets built and they don't just say they're building commercial and only build the residential is a key component of that. Mm -hmm. To keep it. It's a legitimate question regarding the ordinance. Do I have the right to address my mayor regarding this ordinance before this ordinance is actually adopted? Because the opportunity hasn't been afforded if he hasn't been here. So if I can't address my mayor regarding our concerns about these ordinances, can we actually do adopt this if we don't have the right to address I'm it? I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time hearing you. I said, do I actually have the right to address my mayor regarding my concerns with the ordinance before the ordinances are adopted or do we lose that opportunity because you've voted on it? He hasn't been here in any portion of these proceedings in order to have a discussion with the mayor and I'm, it's my understanding I should have the right to address my mayor on these issues. Am I correct? Uh, 
the lo state law requires a quorum uh, to act and introduce an ordinance and a quorum to pass an ordinance. The land use ordinance will have those required quorums. The mayor is just one of five votes. Do you have the right to talk to your mayor about it? Yes, you do. In a, in a forum team. such as this, where if the community wants to speak with him and, you know, he may have an opinion about this ordinance, don't we all have that right My to have that? My understanding is the website has a, the email addresses for the township mm -hmm. committee that you can email. Correct. He's, He's, on the plan. And his <clears throat> He's also accessible through the planning board meeting. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. He's also at the planning board. Right. So I'm, I'm asking you, because we have adopted this today, or you're attempting to adopt this now, or going to. No. So that, oh, does, that, does that... It's an introduction. This, this is an introduction. Okay, an introduction. But does that thwart our ability to be able to address well, the mayor now the because hearing, of this? The public hearing isn't until the 27th. 27th. Regarding okay. this. Yes. Okay, so so he'll be present to where any other, any other concerns can I be brought up and we can discuss it. Okay. I'm sorry? I have no knowledge that he's not going to be here. There's only technically only three of us have to be here to do it. Understanding that, but if we have the right to address our mayor about concerns, I mean, there may be other issues that may be brought up, and I think that the township residents should have that right to be able to do that. We haven't had, we haven't been afforded that right yet. Well, the hearing is going to be on the 27th, and we anticipate the mayor being here. So, can that be tabled until then, or are you going to change anything, or is this? It is I, what it is I, at I this point. I suggest that you. He's talking about. Uh, he's, I think. I think. Mr. Brothers talking about the property maintenance code, not about the housing ordinance yes. that we did talk. I think he's. Are you, are you talking about the ordinance that was just introduced, or are you talking about the parking maintenance? Uh, not the, I'm the, talking uh, about the ordinance that we spoke on. Eleven. What was it? Pete? I'm sorry. Eleven. What? Ordinance eleven. Property maintenance. So you're talking about property maintenance. You property you ma that property maintenance. Pro yes. That's what I'm asking. Adopted. That was adopted. Half an hour. All right, so because he wasn't here, we lost the, our ability to address our mayor on the whole situation. He wasn't here. The rest of the committee has the legal authority to act. I asked a specific question. If he wasn't here, we don't have that opportunity. Obviously. That's all I need to know. Thank you. Thank you. Jack Griffin, uh, just want to thank you for your time. And I want to ask a question here on one of the resolutions. Uh, number three, appointing Adams, Raymond, Hagen Associates as site remediation. Is there a specific uh, site or anything like that, Dan, that you're talking there about, is or is it site. environmental? It's an envi There's a the concern with environmental. Uh, the, someone had used a property that is subject to a tax lien foreclosure uh, uh, and, and also rights of way for junk cars and before the township. Uh, can determine the damages in their right of way because of the junk cars and also the uh, uh, any any problems with foreclosing against a uh, with a tax lien foreclosure they don't want to take property back that has environmentally sensitive areas so that firm was uh, hired to basically do an investigation to make sure that the township doesn't buy into something or not know what its exposure is. Is that their forte? Are they just an environmental I'm firm? defer to firm. Paul. Was there, the there are, there are, I mean, they do handle site remediation. They're also doing, there are also our site remediation specialists on the uh, Sam's Golf Okay, uh, so you've uh, used them. Okay. We've used them in the past. And then just in reference to the affordable housing, I just want to thank you for uh, for passing that, I know time was of the essence for a lot of reasons, but uh, Tiffany did do a great job as a member of the planning board. But I do want you to know that, um, it, you know, with the infrastructure and that type of thing needs to be addressed now, um, you know, we need to think in terms of downtown Marmora generating business, commerce, uh, you know, and also there needs to be, and, and again, not looking to raise taxes, but I'm looking for the safety, you know, if we're going to have a walk type of village type thing suggested at the planning board and like to just again you know you need sidewalks and you need transportation to the town to and from the town so I hope you're thinking in terms of that along with the infrastructure so uh, you know I'm not looking to make this happen overnight but if we're going in that direction you know we should be thinking in terms of that so thank you thank you <clears throat> anyone else Okay, at this time we'll close the public comments section and a motion to go in the closed session.
I hereby move the resolution be incorporated into the minutes authorizing the Township Committee to enter into an executive session for the following matters pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act. The matters are personnel, contract negotiation matters for special legal counsel for employment and labor law, conflict tax assessor, and animal control. I also include my motion at the estimated time and circumstances under which the discussion conducted in closed session can be disclosed to the public as follows. It is anticipated that the matters discussed in closed session may be disclosed to the public upon the determination of the Township Committee that the public interest will no longer be served by such confidentiality. With respect to employment and personnel matters, such discussions will be made public if and when formal action is taken or when the individuals involved consent that it can be made public. With respect to contract negotiations, such matters will be made public when negotiations have ceased and there is no longer a reason for confidentiality. Second. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Palmer? <clears throat> yes. Motion's carried. Thank you. Thank you for attending, Millie. Have a good night.